Welcome back to another episode of Just Another 20-something with me, Marissa. So I know what you are all thinking. This is not the deep episode that you told us last week that we were going to have. And um, yeah, no, it is not. (laughs) Um, I'll be completely honest with you. Life has been very, very hard recently to where being deep and emotional sounds not like something I want to do right now. I just, I know that if I got into a deep topic, I'd probably start crying. So we're not going to do that. And sorry to leave you on that cliffhanger. It's just a lot of stuff is going on in my life and other people's lives around me. And so I just... Right now is not the time for me to be deep. Not yet. But it'll happen. It'll come. And we'll talk about the deep stuff. I'm here for the deep shit. But I'm also here for the stupid shit. And so today's stupid shit (laughs) is we're back on Reddit. Can you believe it? I think I'm just purely a Reddit user now. It's kind of crazy. But I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of like Reddit. It's just kind of funny and everything's weird and it's stupid and that is the exact mood that I need to be in today. So let's get right into it. We are back on Am I the Asshole? This one, like, Am I the Asshole is such a good little weird community. <laughs> like, I I love that there's these weird scenarios that happen in these people's lives. I mean, I'm here for it. And so... We are going to just dive right in. Let's get started. First one. Am I the asshole for calling out my kid's future stepmom for treating me like a surrogate? I don't even know where this is going to go, but it was the most top rated post. So I'm excited. I, 29 female, dated a guy, Joe, 30 male, for three months before he left me to go back to his ex, Kim, 30-year-old female. Right after we broke up, I found out I was pregnant, and now I'm at 24 weeks. Oh, I am already not liking where this is going. I let him know, and he was ecstatic. Turns out his girlfriend had fertility issues and would likely never be able to get pregnant naturally, and he always wanted to be a father. Getting back together was out of the question for both of us, so he is still with his girlfriend. Joe was only allowed at the initial appointment because of COVID-19 and we found out I was having twins. Oh boy, that's fun for you. According to Joe, when he told Kim he had a mental breakdown about her infertility and wanted to talk to me, I met them at their house and Kim stated that she wanted to be involved in my pregnancy because she would eventually be the children's stepmother. She started telling me that I needed to do a home birth and that I needed to formula feed so that they would, they could have the babies half the week and that she wanted one boy and one girl. Oh my God. And that she wanted the kid to call her mama since they would be calling me mommy. I shut her down and said I would make the best choices for my children and my body and left. Oh my God. And you only dated this guy for three months? Oh, okay. Kim continued to be overbearing and texting me every day about my eating habits, exercise habits, and bitching about how her job wouldn't let her take maternity leave. Um, wow, I wonder, I wonder why they wouldn't let you take maternity leave. As It's almost as if you're not pregnant. At the virtual genetics counseling appointment, she attended instead of Joe and took over the whole meeting trying to talk about her family history, which wasn't relevant. When it came time for my 20-week level 2 scan, they allowed me one guest and Joe suggested I take Kim instead of him, which I refused to do so. Joe did end up coming and he found out the gender because I wanted to keep it a surprise for me so we could throw a gender reveal party. I put a pregnancy announcement on my social media and then she put an announcement saying that they were expecting twins the non-traditional way and how blessed she was. I was irritated, but I kept my mouth shut. Then she threw a gender reveal party and posted it on social media. I wasn't even invited. Oh, is this even real? Is this a real story? 
She also announced that she's having a baby shower. I commented on her post and told her to stop treating me like a surrogate and that the kids weren't hers and that Joe didn't have any claim or custody of the kids until they are born. I then called... Okay, bold of you to comment that, but here for it. I then called Joe and reiterated all of this and stated that I would not be seeing either of them until we went to family court and that my mother would be my birthing partner. He and Kim and some of her friends and family are saying I'm an asshole and her mother even called and insisted I give her one of my babies. Like this is the parent trap. So am I the asshole? Um, yeah, absolutely not. Are you the asshole? That is insane. That is the most insane thing I think I've ever heard, actually, ever. Um, Kim's psychotic, actually psychotic. How can, like, what? You can't just, these aren't your kids. Like, sorry, miss. Ew. Okay. Oh, and then she has, like, an update being, like, um, literally, like, did he do this on purpose? Oh, no. Oh my god. Wait. Oh my god. Okay. I need to read this update. I never considered that this could have happened on purpose. We used condoms because I do not react well to hormonal birth control and I had to wait to get on non-hormonal IUD because of other medicinal issues. The Thursday I posted this, I went to the police and they stated that there was nothing they could do because a crime hadn't been committed. In my state, orders of protection are criminal or family, so I was able to get one against Joe. On Friday, I did get a lawyer and they took they let me know in my state there was nothing I could do as far as custody before the babies are born. So I will be leaving my state soon <laughs> to ensure that this isn't my baby's home state and I can't be charged with anything. However, someone sent this post to Kim and she came to my job, damaged my car, and broke a bunch of office windows. I work with kids, so she was arrested for not just the criminal damage and trespassing, but also child endangerment. So hopefully that works in my favor. <laughs> also, if Joe did it on purpose, I don't think Kim knew because she was screaming at me how I stole her life and everything I had was supposed to be hers. <gasps> oh my actual God. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> okay, you know how I, in the beginning I was like, LOL, um my life sucks kidding kidding I take it all back I'm not dealing with that so my life has to be going pretty good that's actually I'm terrified for her I'm so sorry all right um let's move on to the next one am I the asshole for making a punny wall of shame for people who stole from my mom's garden oh that's weird okay let's see what this is about my mom is really into gardening, and sometimes people have come by and stole potted plants, yard statuettes, and even dug a whole plant bulbs with plants out of the ground, or cut all the roses off her bushes because they were too cheap to buy from a florist, I guess. Jeez. Anyway, my dash cam of my car, which I parked in the driveway near the garden bed, caught most all of them close up, and as a way to help my mom not have her plants stolen, I printed all their pictures out and made a poster that said, Oh, hey there, don't be a daffy dill and steal, or else you might end up doing hard time. And it's spelled like time the plant. We hope this'll be a lesson to you. Okay, that's kind of funny. I mean, like, you know. And I put the pictures of everyone stealing from the garden around the border. Also gave each person a funny fake name. Mr. Potato Head. Dilettante. <laughs> Pothead. Prick. Okay. <laughs> Sucker. I peony in my pants. Frondless. Dirtbag. Infertile. <laughs> and Root Boy. I thought it was funny and cutesy. Like, how can you be offended with dumb plant puns? My mom thought it was hilarious and wanted me to hang it up because she was sick of seeing stuff stolen. Which is fair, I got a couple of complaints. One neighbor said I needed to take it down because I had a picture of his son, a minor, who did something dumb, yes, but was trying to bring his sick girlfriend flowers <laughs> and that it was in a dis disproportionate. That's weird. Why would that be disproportionate? Huh? Okay. 
and rude to publicly shame him. I told him that it wasn't that big of a deal and he told me that I was being petty. I called his... <laughs> I called his kid a little birch, which pissed him off and honestly might have been petty. Another guy came to the house and returned a cutting his wife apparently took to propagate, thinking it would be no big deal. But yeah, it damaged the plant because she cut like a quarter off. And he asked if we take down the sign because she was on the board of directors or something from that of town and whatever. My mom had answered the door and told him to make a little bee and buzz off. Anyway, I guess they both know each other and now both of these families are annoyed. Am I the asshole for making a petty sign about people stealing from my mom's garden, hoping to get them to stop? Yeah, no, I don't think you're the asshole. Because that's rude. Why, why would, um, why are people stealing from your mom's garden? And like, I wonder, because this sounds like her garden is obviously very nice to where people would want to steal from it, which makes me think you're probably part of like a neighborhood that has like, you know, like the neighborhood association or whatever. I don't know what they're called, but like, you know, like people like pay attention to like what's going on in your little community. So wouldn't they be like, yeah, like you shouldn't be stealing people in our little nice community i think that's stupid and i think people are just bitter that they're they got called out because obviously they got caught and so they're like oh uh oh like no no this is gross so i would say no you are not the asshole all right oh this one sounds interesting Am I the asshole for putting ugly one-way mirrors on the windows facing one of my neighbors because I saw the husband looking in my windows? Huh. This doesn't sound great. <laughs> okay. I live in an apartment on the ground floor of a house that was converted to apartments. My neighbors, one street over, but the back of their house faces the back of the house I live in, can see my whole backyard and vice versa. My apartment has a whole wall of windows that are on the back of the house. It's gorgeous and it's a big reason I picked the place. I love keeping plants and get it and it <laughs> and it let in a lot of light. Looking out, there is the neighbor's backyard, which is large and comes up close to my place. The property line is maybe 10 or 15 feet from my windows. Once it has gotten to be warm out, I've noticed that the husband of the family who owns that house looks into my apartment a lot even sometimes i'll look up and see him look away then look back minutes later and he's still looking oh that's freaking creepy so i started shutting the shades during the day but that was kind of annoying my place is a dark cramped shoebox without the windows open and i can't do that for too long because the plants were struggling without light so i bought these window coverings that make windows into one-way mirrors during the day when it's light out my windows look just like mirrors now Oh, yeah, that is ugly. <laughs> From the inside, it looks pretty much the same, and the windows look tinted, slightly darker, but that's it. From the outside, you can't see it at all. It looks exactly like mirrors. The section of windows it is applied to is about 8 feet high and 20 feet wide. After a week of the windows being covered up, both of the parents from the neighbor's house came to my door and wanted to talk to me. The wife was complaining about the windows for a lot of reasons. One, they were ugly. <laughs> Two, it was uncomfortable, especially for the teens and their friends, to have a huge mirror adjacent to the swimming pool. It's at a time that they feel insecure about looks, and they have lost interest in hanging out by the pool. Oh, boo-hoo. Three, in the afternoon and evening, it was reflecting a lot of extra sunlight into their backyard, and they couldn't enjoy eating dinner on the back porch with the sun in their eyes. Okay, that is probably the only one that I can maybe get across, is like, yeah. The reflection of the sunlight because if it's like hitting a mirror that shit's intense so i can get on board with that one but everything else is stupid i said sorry about the inconvenience but i wanted it for privacy they both pushed back on that some and i said that i needed privacy because of their husband staring <laughs> he started denying it in front of his wife so i took out my phone oh where i took out my phone where i'd taken pictures and sent it to my group of friends and showed her a couple pictures of her gaping at my apartment and the texts from that time. He got mad and said he incidentally looked over and that the eight foot by 20 foot mirror was a crazy overreaction. 
I said that I'd like to keep it and that I was sorry, but frankly, this was unav- this was avoidable. I think they're both mad because they called my landlord who brushed them off. <laughs> Am I the asshole for putting mirrored film on my windows? Um, no, I don't think you're the asshole. That's creepy as fuck when people just stare at you. Um, and I've had uh, a creepy neighbor when I lived up in um, up in my college house. Uh, we had this guy who not only would stare at us while we were in our backyard, but come over and start talking to us. And he was always creepy, always said something stupid. Like I, we would literally be minding our own business and he would come over and talk to us. And I'm like, dude, no. So yeah, I don't think you're the asshole at all. I get that maybe the sun thing would be bothersome for them, but it's like, hey, you know what you could do? Stop staring into my house. And then we don't have a problem. Whew. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Am I the asshole for refusing to attend an apology dinner after my mother-in-law called me a bad mother at my son's funeral? Uh, first of all, I'm so sorry. That was terrible. I lost my son to congenital heart disease, and he did not survive the open heart surgery at the age of one year and six months. Oh, That is really sad. He was the greatest blessing I had in my life. Everyone kept telling me things will get easier with time. I know that no matter how much time goes by, I'll still be missing my baby and everything sweet about him. Mother-in-law and I were in constant conflict. Things always had been bad between us, but in those months, we reached our limit. He kept getting involved in my son's treatment and criticized every decision I made, claiming I didn't know how to handle my son's illness. We weren't low... We went... What? We went low contact, but she kept causing issues occasionally. My husband was torn between our son's illness and his mother's issues. Ugh, okay. I just have to say, like, because she's saying that the mom and her have had issues, like, from the beginning. I never, like, and this is going to be mean, so sorry to everyone, but why would you stay with someone when you're not, good with the family like if you're having this much tension with the family do you think marrying them is like gonna ease the tension like uh, I don't know anyway besides the point when my son passed away she came to the funeral and caused a scene by arguing with me knowing I had no energy for it she used the fact that everyone was there so she could say it was my fault my son was born sick and I didn't take care of him properly and that I didn't listen to her when suggested other ways to treat his condition. Literally, how? What else can you do? And that I was the one who took their grandchild away from them and caused them heartache. You know what's worse? Having your child. It's her child. She then loudly called me a bad mother. I had no idea how I kept my composure and kept standing on both feet. My moms and sisters responded by telling her to leave, and my husband was sitting down crying. Great. Thanks for the help, bucko. She then went to tell everyone I kicked her out as a way to hurt her further and lied that I convinced my husband to ban her from visiting her grandson's grave. Oh my God, dude. This lady sounds crazy. My husband later sent his side of the family an email talking about my mother-in-law's behavior during and after our son's illness and telling them he no longer will be seeing her. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because um, she sounds toxic as fuck. <laughs> that had the family criticizing us, saying mother-in-law was just trying to do what was best for her grandbaby and called us selfish for assuming we're the only ones struggling with this tragedy. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, but it is just your grandchild. It is their child. They are going to have to go through this pain for the rest of their life. Like... This bitch is already old. She's going to die. Sorry. (laughs) But like, and also in the grand scheme of things, most people are closer to their parents than their grandparents. Like, this is stupid. Oh, I don't like this woman. I haven't seen his mom in a year and eight months. I'm now three months pregnant. No one knew only my sister-in-law, brother-in-law's wife. But word got out. Though we told her not to say anything. 
week later, I had family members saying I was invited to a dinner hosted by mother-in-law so she could both apologize in front of the whole family and settle this issue before the baby was born. They said mother-in-law was regretful and offered to financially provide for her grandbaby, and they want to see that. I refused, but my husband surprisingly wants me to go. I had his grandparents calling me, telling me that I'm a good person with a good heart, and forgiveness is something I'm capable of giving. I told them I'll never be sitting at the same table with the person who called me a bad mother at my child's funeral. I still remember it vividly till this very day. My sister said this change of heart from mother-in-law is probably for the new baby. It could be, but I insisted I won't come. They're saying I'm making, I'm making hard for everyone to move on and pass this unresolved pain and should really go. Oh, God. Okay. That is very, 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 very complicated. And I'm very much to, like, I support people to where, regardless if it's family, if someone treats you really terribly and you don't want them in your life, I don't think you need to have them in your life. And what this lady did was obviously very terrible. Um, and honestly, in my eyes, can be unforgivable. I think if you want to go and hear out, I'm acting like she's listening to this right now, but if she is, um, I don't think that would be a terrible idea. You can just see what she's all about and see if she's full of shit and whatever. And then you could still make your decision even if you go to that dinner. It doesn't mean you need to be in her life. You can just kind of see where what the vibe is. And if the vibe is still off, then bye-bye. Bye-bye, mother-in-law. See you never. All right. Okay, here's the next one. Am I the asshole? Husband threw a barbecue party for his friends. I refused to help. Party was a disaster. Okay. All right. Disclaimer, we're all vaccinated. Oh, goody. So my husband likes to invite his friends, note, his friends, I am not close with them, for barbecue parties. He prides himself on his barbecue skills. The thing is, I always end up doing everything. He buys and preps the meat and then grills it and serves it and collects praise for his barbecue skills. I have to buy drinks, get out enough dishes, clean up the patio slash deck. Oh, non-native speaker. I don't know which one to use that's fine. Patio deck, whatever. I prepare the sides and veggies. I refill the drinks and take away the dishes. We don't use paper plates or plastic cups since I find it wasteful. So, so as to keep the main table, table tidy. It's just nonstop work for me. He told me last week that he invited his friends for Saturday. So yesterday, just announced it, didn't tell me. I said, well, okay, do I know anyone? Nope. These are his workmates and they won't be bringing their spouses. My mom, oh, my mom, what the fuck? Literally doesn't even say that. My husband called it a guy's night. I said, okay then, guy's night. Well, enjoy yourselves. I will be in my craft room working on some of my projects and drinking wine. He said he will handle it. Oh, then you're already not in the wrong. If he said that he'll handle it, it's not your fucking problem. Spoiler alert, he did not handle it. He got the meat all right, but just ignored any other preparation. And I was just so sick and tired of being taken for granted. He never asked me for help. I just do stuff. So I didn't do anything. The patio was a mess. The upholstery of the garden furniture was all messy from our dogs. The table hadn't, wasn't wiped down. There was stuff lying all around. His friends arrived. I welcomed them and then excused myself to the crafts room, put some music on and worked. Cue the messages. He started asking for her stuff. Like, where are the plates? We only keep a small set in the kitchen. The rest is in the basement. Where are the cups? Why isn't the beer chilled? Where's the non-alcoholic beer? Did I not buy it? Where are the sides? I just replied that he said he would handle it all himself. I checked in. I checked on the guys a few hours later and it was a disaster. Table all cluttered. They ordered some takeout of sides. There weren't enough dishes and silverware. Someone had to go drive for drinks. On Sunday, today, he was all grumpy and actually told me that he is disappointed that I didn't pull my weight and that I made our family look sloppy and bad. Oh, fuck this guy. Fuck you. I told him that I'm not his little housewife and that he is a big guy. And if he's embarrassed in front of his workmates, that's all on him. And that I'm glad that he can see at least a tiny bit of work that I do around the house. Got upset and went for a run to let off some steam. Ugh, I fucking hate men, dude. <laughs> I am sorry, but are you fucking kidding me? 
she literally was like, you're going to handle it. And he's like, I'm going to handle it. I will do this myself. And then gets mad and blames it on her. Like, what? Fuck hers. Uh, yeah, no. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. There's an update. It says, thank you for the comments. This made me realize I am at fault as well for tolerating for this for so long. I went out to clear my head. My husband came back from his run and is pointedly not speaking to me and reconsider many things in our marriage. Yikes. <laughs> um, but honestly, true. Why would you want to be husbands with someone who's literally going to blame you for something that you just did not do and that just makes me mad? That makes me mad for her. Ugh. People are so annoying. So yeah, you're not the asshole. You are definitely just... Um, married to a jackass. <laughs> married to a jackass. La 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 la. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Am I the asshole for bringing out regular bread when a pregnant woman ordered garlic free garlic bread? <laughs> Wait, I'm crying. Garlic free garlic bread? Huh? Oh my god. I'm li I'm screaming for someone who works with the public and thank God it's not the food service. Not that retail is that much better, but like, holy fucking shit. I just have so much respect for anyone in the food industry working with the public because people are freaking nuts. Okay, let's get into it. I'm a waitress at a restaurant. Earlier, a pregnant woman came in with her husband when I went to get their orders, the woman asked for garlic-free garlic bread. <laughs> I advised her that our garlic bread was just our regular bread with garlic butter instead of regular butter and asked her to clarify if she just wanted regular bread. But she insisted, no, she wanted our garlic bread just without garlic. <laughs> what the fuck do you think that is then? Oh my God. I let her know she could just order regular bread and it would be a dollar less. But she insisted she had a huge craving for garlic bread without the garlic. Oh my God. I wasn't really sure what to do, but her husband got angry and said something like, can't you see that she's pregnant? It's not that hard to just bring out garlic bread without garlic. <laughs> um, it is that hard. Just order fucking bread. Oh my God. So I took their order and told the kitchen she wanted garlic bread without the garlic. Kitchen staff thought I was being snarky, but brought out the regular bread for her. She immediately starts crying and asking me if I was treating her like an idiot. <laughs> How can I treat a pregnant woman so badly? Is it that hard to make garlic bread without garlic? But literally, we do nothing different to our garlic bread except use garlic butter instead of regular butter. Her husband flagged down a manager telling me I was being condescending and that his wife had been craving this all week, but garlic was making her nauseous. The manager came over and I explained what was going on. The manager apologized and took the bread back and told me to just bring out another loaf of bread with garlic butter on the side. I was a little annoyed, but I did it and gave it to them. The husband got angry again, told the manager I was being intentionally difficult and cruel, and then left with his wife who ate the garlic-free garlic bread using the garlic butter. Oh, my God. This just feels bizarre to me. Both me and my manager weren't really sure how to handle this. Am I the asshole for bringing out regular bread when the woman ordered garlic-free garlic bread? Okay, edit. To clarify, it's focaccia loaf. The regular and the garlic bread are baked the exact same way. It's just that one uses garlic and the other doesn't. To clarify further, the lady says she has been to the restaurant before. She was completely aware of what our garlic bread contained. She was specifically craving our garlic bread, which is a flat focaccia with salt, herbs, butter, and garlic. Our regular bread is the exact same thing with no garlic. So it has salt, herbs, and butter. They are both served warm. The bread isn't toasted like Texas style garlic bread. Focaccias are pretty flat, so you can't really toast it, but the crust is still pretty crunchy and buttery. I can only imagine that um, this girl is like so angry typing this. I mean, I would be, um, but that's insane. That's so fucking annoying. Are you kidding me? Also, how can you not think that you're an idiot when you literally 
say out loud, Hi, can I have the garlic bread with no garlic? <laughs> oh, you're bringing me regular bread? That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> like, what? What? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's just insane. Just insane. This one looks really interesting. <laughs> Um, am I the asshole for getting mad about my mom marrying my fiance's dad? Oh my god. I am really terrified for you. Okay. I, 24 female, and my fiance, 24 male, have been together since our sophomore year of college. It's around five years now. For context, my mom, 50-year-old female, had an affair with a coworker when I was 16, leading to our parents' divorce. Sorry, I burped in the middle of that. Parents' divorce. She had been single ever since, going on dates but no serious relationships. I have a good relationship with my dad and his new wife. Sadly, my fiancé's mom passed two years ago due to cancer, and his dad, 53-year-old male, has been single since. My fiancé proposed last year, but our wedding was delayed due to COVID. Our families had never met up to... Oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Jesus, I just had a stroke. Our families had never met up to this point because his family lives in South Carolina, whereas we're in North Carolina. <laughs> okay, that's like so far away. Um, around a three hours drive away from his dad. Three hours? It's like nothing. Three months ago, in January 2021, we decided it was time to have our families meet for the first time to discuss our upcoming wedding in June 2021. Held in our backyard, COVID-appropriate, immediate family only. Yeah, I don't care at this point. <laughs> my dad and his family, my fiancé's dad, and my mom all met at our place to meet and discuss the wedding. This went well, albeit there was some tension between my mom and dad. This morning, out of the blue, my mom called me and announced that she had eloped. Oh my god, I didn't know it was going to happen so fast. <laughs> Wait. I was shocked, as she had not been dating anyone to my knowledge. Upon questioning, it turns out that she and my fiancé's dad had been dating in secret since that meeting in January and had married in secret yesterday, making my fiancé my stepbrother. Ah. Uh. <gasps> Oh, this is really terrible. I want to throw up just thinking about this. She said that I should now cancel my wedding because it would be inappropriate to marry my stepbrother. Oh my God. Oh my dear God. Um, huh? <laughs> I'm absolutely horrified. I shouted at my mom saying she just loves ruining my life and called her selfish. First she cheated on my dad, and now she went and married my fiancé's dad, knowing full well I was about to marry my fiancé. My mom said that I was still young, and I'd have a chance to meet someone new. But she's old and has to take every opportunity she's got. So I was an ungrateful bitch for not approving of her marriage. Then she accused me of wanting her to die alone. <laughs> so you know what I was talking about? You should probably, like, get away from family that's gross um this exact situation is what i'm talking about you should probably never have a relationship with your mom <laughs> never is a strong word but this is yikes this is really not not amazing for you i don't think i'm the asshole but i just wanted to make sure because ultimately i don't want her to have to be alone even though i think she did that to herself by hurting my dad i think i should be allowed to marry my fiance as we first as we met first. I'm also... Oh, God. I'm also 12 weeks pregnant with my fiancé's kid. So that complicates matters more. I haven't told anyone yet. Am I the asshole for being mad about my mom marrying my fiancé's dad and because she said I can't marry my fiancé anymore? I mean, technically... You're only step-siblings. And I don't think... Like, does anyone need to know? <laughs> does anyone need to know? Why don't we just keep it a big secret from everyone? 
and then you can just live your normal life and um, you can yeah <laughs> I yeah I think you should just not let anyone know that you guys are now step siblings you should just marry each other anyway um, literally never talk to your mom again because she sounds like she sucks really bad and uh, at least you have your dad that really sucks for the guy though wait okay yeah I want to know what the guy's like the fiance's dad was thinking because dude both of them are so in the wrong like I'm so curious oof okay Wait, what is this? Am I the asshole for emasculating my... Oh, and then she's... Okay. Okay, let's let's read this one. Am I the asshole for emasculating her, who she's 32 female, fiance, who's 38 male, in front of his family? Ooh, this will be fun. Okay. My fiance and I have been together for about six years, engaged for two. After we got engaged, we sat down and had the deal breakers talk. Basically, things in our lives, our futures, hypothetical situations that leave little room for compromise, i.e. adopting children, finances, family boundaries, religion, etc. One of the things on my list was no prenup. I'm not here to debate with anyone about their use. I just think if you're preparing for divorce before even getting married, it's a sign that you're probably marrying the wrong person. He agreed and everything was fine. Okay. I'm just going to throw in my two cents, even though she said she's not asking for it, but I'm going to throw it in anyway. I don't really mind prenup. Here's my little secret. I don't mind it. In fact, if I could separate my money from his money, I probably will. Anyway, <laughs> lately his family, particularly his mother, keeps on bringing up signing a prenup. Oh, that is awkward though. If like the mom is telling you to do it, because it's like, eh. She thinks you're going to, like, ruin him. <laughs> I told her no many times. Said this is an issue between us, and we will discuss it privately and make our own decisions as a couple. He also tells her no, although more weakly. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Well, last night we went there for dinner, and she brought out an actual prenup drafted by her lawyer. Okay. Why do moms do this? Guys, I'm scared to date anyone, because what if their mom sucks? <laughs> What if their mom and their dad suck and then I'm going to have to break up with them because I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of that family. Okay. She put it in front of me after dinner and told me to sign. <laughs> Obviously I didn't even read it, let alone sign it. She called me a gold digger. <laughs> oh my God. No one, including my fiance stood up for me. So I stood up for myself. Oh yeah. Actually I would throw the fuck down if my fiance, um, didn't stand up for me after his mom is calling me a gold digger. Bye. I told her that there's no gold to dig there. <laughs> oh, yes. I make four times as much as he makes. I'm an MD and he dropped out second year. I paid off all my student debt. He has over a thousand K left. Wow. Boss ass bitch. I have my own house, ample savings. I will certainly inherit more from my parents than he will from his. We have six kids and our middle class. What is she worried about? That shut her up real quick, especially when my... Sill? Sill. I don't know. It just says S-I-L. I don't know what that says. When my something then said, if anything, he's the gold digger here. <laughs> Which facts on facts. My fiance is now angry with me. He said it was me emasculating for his family to know I am so much more successful than him and his brothers are making jokes and changing his contact info to gold digger. Oh, wait, no, that still doesn't make sense. I've, I was like, maybe SIL is brother-in-law, but obviously it's not because it almost sounds like son-in-law, but then that really wouldn't make any sense. Sister-in-law, sister-in-law, ha ha ha, figured it out. <laughs> okay. Um, personally, I don't think he was rude or out of line, but he thinks I was an asshole and could have handled it better. 
oh my god no girl you clapped back and i am here for it here for it first of all i do have to ask though why don't you want the prenup (laughs) it sounds like you have everything going for you are you sure you want to marry this guy who might you know steal this away from you this is what i mean i feel like prenups aren't that bad and i hope one day i am exactly like her and i get the prenup because i want my money sorry that's really funny though you're not the asshole um he sounds like kind of a little bit of a loser and also pretty bad that he didn't stand up for you at all as his mom is calling you a gold digger i would fucking throw hands sorry sorry Huh? Wait, is this what happened? <laughs> Just the title of this. Am I the asshole for refusing to go to my dad's unless I'm fed properly? Hmm. Okay. I'm a 17-year-old female and my parents are separated. My dad lives in another country, so I don't see him much except for holidays. He lives in Germany with my stepmom and nine-year-old little sister. I don't like my stepmom at all, mainly because of her parenting style. She's a complete helicopter parent. I don't think my sister has ever actually been out of an adult sight in her life. She's never played outside with her friends or anything. And the most annoying thing for me is that she's never eaten a hot meal. Like it's cold being served to her. And the reasoning is it might burn her mouth. She's also never stayed up past 7 p.m. Well, I mean, to be fair, she is nine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to treat a nine-year-old things that apply to my sister also apply to me too oh yeah that's weird when i'm at odd when i'm at my dad's i'm usually there for two weeks at a time and then that entire time i don't eat anything hot and i'm pretty much confined to my room which has a bed and that's it after seven i can live with having to stay in my room but not in but not with being fed cold food i have arfid just a-r-f-i-d and already an and an already limited diet i can barely stomach food warm let alone cold yesterday my day oh my god i'm just doing the worst reading yesterday my dad rang me about booking flights for the summer and i said no he tried to guilt me into going and i said i'm not going unless i'm treated like i should be i told him i will not be going unless everything i eat is hot and that i don't care if it means eating before my sister and that I won't be subjected to her stupid rules anymore. My dad contacted my mom, and my mom said I was an asshole to act so spoiled. Spoiled? What? Okay. Um, this is a very weird situation. <laughs> I have never heard of this in my entire life. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really, not really sure how you should go about this. Um, your stepmom sounds like a freak. Um, I don't know why you need to be put under those rules considering you are 17 and I don't get the whole food hot thing. That's very weird. (laughs) Oh, I don't know. That's complicated. (laughs) I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, yeah, I would just not go. (laughs) I would, I would withhold. I would, oh my God, (laughs) I'm having another stroke. I would do what you're doing. Be the asshole, quotation marks, because I think you're not being the asshole for asking for your food to be warm. Maybe you could say, can it be lukewarm? Can it be room temperature by chance? Maybe. All right. Let's see. <laughs> wait huh <laughs> alright am I the asshole for refusing to let someone order an item off the menu I'm not really sure where this is going I'm a waitress at a restaurant chain known for their ice cream do with that what you will oh it's probably um, Dairy Queen <laughs> I'm assuming or I guess restaurant I don't know I don't give a And I have a semi-regular family that comes in every once in a while. That's weird, but whatever. Every time they come in, they order their youngest child mac and cheese. The first time I served them, 
the child threw up all over the booth. Ew. I didn't think that much of it, just that he was sick or had an upset stomach. I cleaned the booth. The next time was the same thing. Mac and cheese, then puke. Again, in the booth and on the table. Oh, that is really gross. This is an every time occurrence. The kid orders mac and cheese and then throws up. The kid never gets to the bathroom and most of the time he doesn't even make an attempt to leave the table. I believe once he started walking I believe once he started walking to the bathroom. This most recent time they came in and I was their waitress. Okay, wait. Restaurant that is known for their ice cream. But then she's waiting on them. doesn't matter um i was the waitress the child went to order mac and cheese again and i asked the mom is he okay to have that he gets sick every time <laughs> and the mom said oh yeah craft mac and cheese makes him sick but he wants it i said ma'am i'm sorry i don't think your child should order this if you know he's going to puke from eating it and quite frankly i really don't want to have to be i really don't want to have to clean up vomit tonight the mom was thrown off a bit but when I said, why are you allowing your child to order food that makes him sick just to have someone else clean it up? Oh, yikes. And the manager had come over and was agreeing with me. She ordered him chicken tenders and fries instead. Was I in the wrong for not wanting slash allowing him to order mac and cheese that makes him sick? I've shared this story with a few people and I've had some mixed reactions. Um, well, I mean, if your manager agreed with you, I think you're pretty much in the right. <laughs> I would only say like, I think it was, um, I think it was good to tell the lady like, Hey, um, like your child gets sick all the time by eating this. Should he be eating it? And like, what kind of stupid mom is like, Oh yeah, he gets sick from that. We just let him throw up. Like that's weird. So I think I would have stopped by just being like, I think you should order something else. And like, I wouldn't have personally said, why are you allowing your child to order food that makes him sick just to have someone else clean it up? I wouldn't have said that. But clearly, you got away with it. So <laughs> I'd say you're not the asshole. I'd say it kind of worked out in your favor. Um, also, really gross. That sucks. What a weird mom. I feel like this, am I the asshole, is just the theme of um, weird mother. Mothers, I should say. Oh, this sounds funny. <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend to grow up? Yikes. Me, 23... What is wrong with me? Me, 23-year-old male, and my girlfriend, 27-year-old female, have been together for about five years. Four, but literally a week from five. Ew, wait. Doesn't that make you, like, underage when you were together? Okay, not gonna think about it. Not gonna think about it. And three years into the relationship, we had a child. For context, he, he wasn't a planned child by any means, as we had taken birth control measures. Early on, I wore protection, and then she started taking birth control. Neither of us knew how the child happened, but we accepted it that it happened and moved on. I finished up the last bit of college I had and found a job where before the baby arrived. She stopped working as my income was now enough, and now she stays home with the baby as we discussed that was what would be best. In the following years, since my birth of my son, my girlfriend has grown increasingly more intolerant. At first, she was elated, wanted to show him off, and was happy to deal with everything. Then it grew to her being annoyed by small things. She wanted me to change every diaper. We split them once, once I'm home and during off days, and was annoyed by everything our son did. Uh, God. Flash forward now, and contrary to saying terrible twos, he tends to be very well behaved. He doesn't cry that much, he's adapted to potty training quickly and well, and he doesn't really fuss. My girlfriend has been going out a lot. I don't have a problem with it because everyone needs time to have fun and relax. This night was a night she went out. A few nights ago, my son came to my side of the bed. He woke me up and told me that he peed in his sleep. I told him it was okay. I woke up my girlfriend and told her and asked her to clean him up quickly while I went and cleaned it. 
She took a minute to wake up, so I went ahead and left to go clean it up. In the middle of it, I heard her screaming at our son. Oh, no. Oh, no. I go in there and ask her why she's screaming at him, and she responds that it's because he peed the bed. (laughs) I told her he's two and that accidents happen. It shouldn't be a moment to scold and scream. She said that since I could be better, I should do it. So I helped him get cleaned up and then cleaned up his room. And by the time he fell asleep on the couch, I covered him up and went back to my room. When I got back is when the argument started. I told her that I shouldn't have to handle that alone because she can't control her anger. Anger. She told me that since I was such a good parent, I should quit my job and stay at home and she could go to work since she's so horrible. She went on with this for about five minutes before telling me she regrets having our son. Okay. (laughs) A little shocked, I told her she didn't have, she didn't have a way of finding a job capable of supporting us and that she proposed the idea of her staying home when he was born. I told her she needs to grow up because the way she's acting will be something he remembers. Ever since, we've barely spoke and now I'm wondering if I took it too far. No. Dude, no. She literally said, I regret having this kid. Um, yikes. That sounds like someone you probably don't want to be with. Oh, that sucks though. Also, he's only 23. (laughs) Ah. Ew, that sounds too much. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> okay, so most of these little am I the asshole things say like right next to it, whether it's like I am the asshole or not the asshole or whatever. And so this one says everyone sucks. So I'm interested. And this is going to be the last one for the day. So am I the asshole for telling my fiance I don't like her wedding dress? <laughs> Which isn't going great. So my fiance and I are getting married in nine months. She's been dress shopping with her girls for months now. She found the dress, she loved it, and bought it, and was too excited to keep it a secret. She showed me pics of the bridesmaids' dresses, and I told her they were pretty. They matched the groom's suits really well. Anyway, she brought her dress out and asked what I thought. I specifically asked her if she wanted the God's honest truth and wants me to critique the dress, or if she knows she loves it and she just wants to show me. She said she wanted my opinion. She put the dress on and came out of the bathroom. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. She's a beautiful woman and looks incredible in anything, of course. But the dress completely dwarfed her and didn't really fit the wedding theme she had worked so hard for. She wanted a foresty, magical, whimsical type theme. Flower crowns of the bridesmaids, etc. But she chose a super sparkly dress with a huge skirt, which looked nothing like the simply body-hugging sexy dresses she had been repeatedly showing me. She had picked basically a huge Disney princess dress and I just didn't like how it looked at all. I was honest with, I was honest when I told her that I didn't like it and I was surprised she picked it because she doesn't seem to match her. I just thought it was too much poof and sparkle. She got really quiet and stormed back upstairs and then stormed out of the house and went to her mom's. Oh no. Texted me saying she couldn't believe I would say I didn't like it and what a dickhead I am and has blocked number. Oh my God. Okay, geez. Um, This is our first major fight, and I'm just so annoyed because I asked if she wanted a real opinion, and she said yes. Am I the asshole for telling her I don't like the dress? Edit to add. Ah, uh, haha. I read my credit card statement. The dress was $9,000. Might help explain the reaction. Oh, you don't like this $9,000 dress? Great, because I can't return it. Probably went through her head. I don't know what to do, but sit here and laugh. Is laugh crying a thing? <laughs> oh, God. Let's see what the comments say on this one. Um, yeah, people are like, you're not an asshole, but you are stupid. <laughs> um, yeah, most people are saying you're just kind of dumb. But that is interesting that this is saying everyone sucks. Because why does the... Why does the girl suck? I mean, I guess because she asked for her opinion. And I mean, it does sound like she kind of chose a dress that like wasn't even anything like she thought. I don't know. She should have just saved it for the day. I don't think I'm going to show my husband my dress 
because I think one they're probably not gonna care which is annoying but I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna show up and he's gonna be like wow and I'm gonna be like yeah <laughs> and that's gonna be that situation all right so that was um the end that was the last I'm the asshole reading we're gonna do for today um Again, so sorry that there's no deep episode today, but you know what? Um, my heart just couldn't handle it today. We just needed some happy, good, go lucky things. Keep everyone on a light, happy mood. Um, and don't worry, we will get into the deep stuff eventually. I'm not going to make a promise that it's going to be next week because honestly, I just have no idea. <laughs> but we will get deep. We do do that on this podcast. It will happen. Don't worry about it. I just know that you guys really like those episodes because guess what? I have the intel. I have the stats. I know that people like when I get deep. So I will. I will. Just not right now. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode and leave me a rating on Apple Podcasts. Go leave me a review. I would love to see your guys' thoughts and how you guys are liking the show. So I will talk to you guys all next week with a brand new episode. Bye.